Hi, and welcome to Medicine Past, Present and Future. My name's Dr Nick, and I'm the past. And my name's Dr Isabel, and I'm the future. And together, we're, we're the, the present. present. Now, Dr. Isabel, I've got a question for you. What is the connection between a flea and a tapeworm? Oh, well, that's a pretty easy one, Dr. Nick. They're both parasites. But what is a parasite? Ah, it's something that lives on or in a host organism and feeds on that organism for its food. You yuck. <laughs> yeah. And the word comes from the Greek para, meaning alongside, and sitos, meaning food. So literally to eat at another's table. Now, you mentioned tapeworm at the beginning. Dr Nick, that's a really good example because tapeworms can live inside our intestines for a decade and grow up to 10 metres long. Mm. But did you know, Dr Nick, that you can order a tapeworm in the form of a pill off the internet? What, as a pet? Not quite. Back in the 1830s, people used to buy tapeworms and eat them as a weight loss strategy. That just sounds ridiculous. Yeah, those are my thoughts exactly. So just in case anyone was wondering, it is not a good idea to buy a tapeworm in a pill off the internet ever. Now, thankfully, tapeworms themselves are pretty rare in Australia, but there are some worms that are a little bit more common, such as the pinworm or a threadworm. Now, this could be really embarrassing, Dr Isabel, but I'm your dad, so that's my job. Uh oh <laughs> Do you remember an incident when you were about five years old? Oh, no. And the cry came from the bathroom, Daddy, there are worms in my poo. <laughs> and you were right. Oh, my God, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> important to normalise these things, Dr Isabel. Yeah, well, if I remember correctly, uh, they looked a little bit like little cotton threads, but can we move along now? <laughs> well, the important thing is they don't matter very much apart from being a bit itchy and they're easy to treat with some simple medication you buy over the counter at the pharmacy. So let's get on to some gory stories, Dr Nick. I know you've got one for me today. <laughs> yes, so I bring you a fish louse. So this little creature attaches itself to the tongue of a fish, sucks all the blood and the eventually replaces the fish's tongue entirely. Oh, that's disgusting, Dr Nick. Well, I see your fish louse and I raise you a zombie ant fungus. Yeah, so this fungus, it takes over the central nervous system of the ant. The ant attaches to vegetation. The fungus grows up and explodes through the brain, releasing more spores to infect even more ants. That is totally hideous. <laughs> I guess the fungus didn't have a lot of choice because an ant's brain is pretty small, so there wasn't mush room in there. Oh, well, maybe they were looking for a shroom with a view. What does a mushroom get when it's having a midlife crisis? Oh. A spores car? Oh, all right, Dr Nick, that's enough. You win this one. <laughs>